Yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you say? I'm running this rodeo. And... We're just filming it. Just okay. Pointing cameras at you. You're in charge. <laughs> bookshop now um, so uh, one of my favorite places so come on with me and we'll have a look around um, at the lovely things in here I read a lot of young women um, a lot of young feminists I find them immensely inspiring immensely interesting Louise O'Neill um, I've had the great privilege of reading her third novel, which um, she's just finished. Uh, it, won't be, it won't be published until early next year. And I, it, it's just, it's beyond great because it, it shows a new way of being a woman in fiction, I think. I think one of the, one of the many things that hold, holds women back is our, our need to be liked, our need to be nice. and. Um, in both asking for it and in this new book. The characters aren't likeable, they don't care. And uh, I love that, that, that swagger. I mean, I read a lot of crime as well, and that doesn't influence me so much. I, I read that just to kind of, to just escape. If you're looking for a good uh, police procedure a crime book, Let the Dead Speak by Jane Casey is fabulous. It's, um, it's, set in a cult, a kind of a religious -y cult. Um, and it's a detective that has been in uh, Jane's earlier books, Maeve Carrigan. She's a great character and, uh, you know, I really like her. But the whole, the cult thing adds an extra element. I, I enjoy, you know, it was one of these devoury books that I read in, um, in, in an evening. Um, but like late into the night, I would recommend highly. Um, if I could only read one book for the rest of my life, it's really, really, it's an awful question to be asked. Um, the one I'm going to pick is um, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, simply because I'm still reeling from what a work of genius it is, like the structure of it, and like the, the six different storylines in it, they're all, it's like six different books. It's just, it's astonishing. So yeah, that'd be the one. So this is The Provincial Lady in London and it's by E.M. Delafield. And this is actually the second one, or the first one is the um, A Diary of a Provincial Lady. But I want to show you something. This was given to me by a friend who, who sought it out on, um, you know, one of those sites that finds ancient books. And uh, see, it was given to somebody in 1933. It's like, this is proper old. Um, but they've been reissued and uh, they're just such fun and they're so light and but there's a sting in them as well. Um, she's a great, great character and it's written in diary form so it's quite snappy and the whole feel of it is very, it's, it's immersive in a kind of a safe world. The next author I've picked is, is Moisen Hamid. Now you might know him because he wrote The Reluctant Fundamentalist and he also wrote How to Get uh, Filthy Rich in Rising Asia. And he also wrote another book called Moth Smoke, which is my favorite of his novels. I mean, How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia was the most excoriating and depressing exploration of late stage capitalism. But it was still, it was written with great kind of energy and verve. He's fantastic, he's a very interesting author. This is his fourth novel, it's also great. Um, and, it, and it's about, about you know, he he, it's about the refugee crisis, really, I suppose, but about other things too. Again, I recommend him. I remember being in bed, um, it was maybe about six or seven, and I was reading my Enid Blyton book, and, um, my dad came in and told me to go to sleep. And uh, so he turned off the light and then when he was gone, I turned it on again and kept reading. I was a library girl because I didn't have much money. Um, 
and it was just so very, very, very thrilling that you could go to this place and get all these books and it didn't cost money. And it was like a ritual on a Saturday that I'd go. Like libraries are fantastic. So this is the choice by Edith Eager. Um, she was um, a Hungarian Jew um, and she was 15 when she was um, uh, rounded up uh, by the Nazis. And um, she spent time in Auschwitz and she survived the war. And it's one of the most powerful books I've ever, ever read. Um, it's so moving, it's so horrifying. And it's, it's just so hopeful because she forgives. She, she goes back to Germany like, like decades and decades later. And through a bizarre set of circumstances, she ends up sleeping in Goebel's bed. And, and she forgives. And it's just, it's amazing. Um, it's astonishing. It's really, really, really powerful. She seems like a, just an incredible human being. Who inspires me to write? Well, women, like I'm always inspired by women. Like recently enough, I read, no, I suppose it was about a year and a half ago, I kind of went through um, an orgy of Leanne Moriarty. And I just, first of all, I was incredibly depressed at her brilliance and how, and how crap I am by comparison. And then I thought, no, I'm going to raise my game. You know, she showed me about excellent plotting. So I thought, right, grand, thank you, Leanne. Um, I am humbled, I, you know, I bend the knee um, and I'm going to go away and try harder.